Uh, number four is? Four is the Libertines. Oh, God damn. Two time. We got the first time was their first TV appearance ever. Last time was their last yeah. TV appearance yeah. ever as a group. That's right. So we bookended the Libertines' career, which says a lot about where it went. Uh, yeah, amazing band. We love them. A lot of people might forget this. Do you remember this? Oh, uh, yeah. What's the name of that German Chancellor? What's his name? Otto. He was the first German Chancellor, Otto von. Oh, yeah. Is German politics is German. Bismarck? The church guards are in for a crazy year! <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, no, what was his name? No, I don't know. I don't know what he's on about. Bismar, and then a K, isn't it? I don't know. Bismar, <laughs> what was that? and then a K. <clears throat> Bismar. See? Hmm? Bismar. Bismar. Bismarck? The church guards are in for a crazy year! Yeah, of course. That was the legendary one, but do you remember when they came back on and they did it again? They didn't catch you out again. They did. This is it. What? Say the same thing. What thing? The special German word. Chancellor. What? German Chancellor. I can't remember. What the special oh, word I can't remember either. Bismarck. No, Bismarck. 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 Big Chief Dark! We're gonna go first this year! We should have bought a guitar and then I could sing some songs. We could sing some songs. We can do it after the pilot. Painful. Yeah, it could be painful. <laughs> we first met, we didn't really meet. Like, I'd seen him because I yeah. was like a little boy in the crowd in a pub in Liverpool and he was playing guitar in a really awful band called the Roosters. Like, we both had like sons. I wasn't a particularly good guitarist, but I, I knew a few chords and I had ideas for songs. And they seemed to fit together with like the half ideas he'd had. So even though we didn't particularly like each other, it's like two two one-legged men having yeah. to having to two one-legged men who themselves to each other, split down the middle, and they can stand up. And after a while, learn to walk. I have, I just have memories of of moments from great shows. I remember there's there's moments when during during a show, um, Carl would like turn around and look at me with this look of complete grimace on his face, which meant he was actually really putting his all into it. And I'd look at him and I'd think, hell yeah, yeah, you can go on with your bad self, that's cool. And when I see Peter, he'd turn around and look at me with the, with the complete look of joy on his face, having the best time in the entire world, and it would just make me laugh so much. The 21st and you got this big sort of co-headline tour, well, support tour with Supergrass and stuff. Is it, you know, you enjoying it? Is it everything you thought it would be when you started at the band? Well, the thing is, mainly the nature of this band, and it's had quite a few members over the years, and the nature of our relationship, it's something that tends to, we could be in any environment, we could be signed or unsigned, yeah. it's something that's just there as it is, and that's the world we live in. We could be still doing what we were doing before, and we'll be doing something different tomorrow, but as long as we're together, then Arcadia exists, and all we can make is even for five minutes. Yeah. You see what I mean? Last gang in town. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean, though, don't you? It doesn't. All, all that is like superfluous unless you just commit to the idea of being a star or selling a million. It doesn't matter as long as you've still got what you set out with, which was the dream. Yeah. You know. And what happens if you get to that point where you sell a million and become stars? Do you think it's going to be harder to hold I on? I can't really. I don't know. I can't, it's this part of me that can't envisage that happening, just because of the nature of the music and the things we say. Mm. It's hard to imagine like, a million people singing along. But if they do, then I won't deny that I'd be, I'd be another aspect of the Arcane Dream, you know, a, a step beyond what we imagined. Yeah. Which was some kind of enclosed, libertarian, worldwide uh, commune of the soul, I suppose. No, well, we know we, when we're in Madrid. Where is the Generalissimo? Where is the Generalissimo? In Madrid! 
we do. We have an idea of oh, sound or even a band, really. We just always believed in quite an old-fashioned way in songs. Complete faith. It's what we lived inside. It's the only thing we had, really. We didn't have religion and... I don't know, we had love affairs and whatever, and drugs, but nothing that really captured you completely. And songs did that. I'd always lived inside songs, but, and so had he. And then we created our own ones, and that was that. And well, that was what everything. songs did you live in? Which songs? Any songs that you find yourself singing for even a snatch of a second a day, you know? Yeah. I think when I was about 13, I got stuck in Venus in Furs for about two weeks. I got awfully cramped in there. I got stuck in Rent by Pet Shop Boys, because um, my friend's dad used to play in a car. You took me to a restaurant on Broadway, bought me caviar. The Libertines pioneered new ways for bands to use the internet. Not least when they posted invites to last-minute sing-alongs on their website. Such gigs would take place in pub back rooms or at the houses of fans or even more extraordinary locations. They played a gig in their own house. They advertised it on the internet and said, come tomorrow, we're playing a gig at our house. Um, this was actually after they played the Astoria, 2000, uh, 2000 people at the Astoria. They came and advertised it. Nobody believed them. Why would anybody play a gig in their own house? It's insane. Not everyone thought that guerrilla gigs were a good idea. Of course, the coppers rolled in and broke out the end. But you know what? Even that was turned into a magnificent gesture because as the, as the police are running up the stairs, Pete looks at Carl, Carl looks at Pete, and they start singing uh, the Guns of Brixton by The Clash. This was it. This was not about marketing. This wasn't about the Britpop style of, you know, you pose, you get up on stage, you know, you sneer a bit and then you're done. This was genuine. So, is it yeah. <laughs> Same time next week. Oh, sweetie, I can't wait. Halo rocks. Rocks. R-A-W-K-S. Rock music. Uh, one band, past or present, you'd most like to do a tour with and why? Uh, the music The The Lars. Uh, like when we first, the Strokes first came along, our manager, like, she wasn't, she was supposed to be our manager, but she hadn't seen, we hadn't seen her for six months, and all of a sudden the Strokes came along and she, she, she brightened up pretty sharply. Yeah, she did. Because <laughs> she thought, oh, I know some boys who dress you like smoked with your bob, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah in, in terms of inspiration, then, you yeah. Know, you didn't, you didn't even like him. No, that's because I, I was thought, saying, oh, there's this wicked band, you got to hear them, and they heard it, and he went, that's rubbish. Yeah, and because it sounds sound like badly recorded Velvet Underground, and that's saying something. Velvet Underground, you know. Worst recorded band history. But it's a great effect. Two, three. So keep smiling through, just like you always do. Until the blue skies change the dark clouds far away. And will you just say hello to the folks that I know? Tell them I won't be long. They'll be happy to know. That is you, Sonic. Go, I was. Oh, again, but I. Dear Libertines. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I know you're dead tired. It's such a tight schedule. Well, good luck to you. Stay cool. For Mr. Carlos. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right, gorgeous. Never mind if you don't remember me. I just want to give you a big shout. You guys are totally mad. <laughs> to me, who's been into Django Reinhardt or something. <laughs> Thank you, Shira. Dear John. Well, she's not, she's not fussy, is she? Uh. That's just the nature of the world. Right, look at her. 
Yeah, but it's a spider's bag, but what's the content of it? Don't you vote your car, do you know what I mean? Control yourself. No, but what's in a bag, that's what you're saying. It's a spider's bag, but what's in it? Don't be silly, it's none of your fucking business. Exactly. Some friend he is. I did everything I could for that boy. I treated you know him like my do? own mother. You know what I do to the fat turkey at Christmas, don't you? He goes, gobble, 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 and then out comes the bleed. And when that happens, it's turkey no more. And the fat man of the house only gets fatter. Isn't that right, big man? Uh, Middle Girl 666, if there's one song in the world you wished you'd wrote, what song would it be? I always flirt with death, I'll end up killed, but I don't care about it. And I hear cars threats, I stand up straight and tall and shout about it. Oh, I'm on another world with you. <laughs> another Girl, Another Planet by the only ones. I actually did write that, but <laughs> I've realised later that I've done something similar. It's a great song. MC Hamster, what? It was a funny arrangement, living with Peter. Yeah, our, our house is a very open house, which is a good thing and a bad thing. You know, we had some very good times in that house. But, you know, everything started to go a little bit awry when the water stopped working and things got broken. But as you remember, the house was um, a veritable Alad Aladdin's cave of all sorts of crap. <laughs> Fridge. Is fridge? Well, look at this fridge. I've seen fridges like that. You should see another one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Roll, I mean. Yeah, this is Carlos speaking. Yeah, well, I'd just like to say Peter's probably the best lyricist I've ever come across, and that's what really inspired me in the first place, you know? I mean. Hello? Hello there? <laughs> Hello? Have some manners, please. It's a bit of a generalisation, really, saying it's about drugs. Uh, it's as much, it's much about drugs as it is about noses, so... I think it's all there, really, I don't think. Um, I want to go up rock, isn't it? Do you want to be in a music video? Yeah, we'll be trying it for the next one. So. It's a good video, man. It came out real nice, I think. Yeah, yeah I can't watch it myself, but... Really? Yeah. Well, it's just you get too embarrassing yourself on camera having to act up for the... Possibly. Yeah. I think it came out real nice. I think a lot of people, when they, when they, we knew that the video was coming in, was expecting it to be a lot more lo-fi and a lot more cheaper looking, but it's actually come across looking real... Oh, it's really cheap. Yeah. It was in, yeah. in, in, in our front room. It's in our house. And but you know, did you see a girl who dances really funny? Yeah. Yeah, that's Tabitha, he's my mate. She was like this. But she, that's how she dances in real life. Though. A lot of people think that's Emma B from Radio 1, actually. I think so. And it's me. This girl from Radio 1, she looks a little bit like her, apparently. Did she she people on the message board. Probably in private. In the privacy of her own home. Uh, this is a bit of an odd question, so you might take offence to this, but Benny wants to know, do you find Tom Jones's voice strangely and worryingly erotic? Do you see more similarities with the coral than with the white stripes, for instance? With oh, I don't. I'd, no, I don't no. see more similarities with the coral than the white stripes, no. I'd say, like, e we're equally as different from the coral as we are from the white stripes. But completely different songs, completely different style to the coral. And to white stripes in a way. Maybe we've got more of a similar guitar sound to the white stripes. I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. like comparing an oak tree to a buffalo, isn't it? But suddenly you have all those bands, and they're all part of what is, which is what it's yeah, called. Yeah, but one man somewhere has sat down yeah. and written, you know, the new rock and roll revolution. <laughs> what buffalo? Yeah. Which is nonsense. Sorry. Maybe it is. I don't know. I'm not bothered about it. But it helped you. Well, yeah, that's maybe the deal. It, the deal maybe is, it, look, if maybe it was the kiss of death. Could sound the record, you know, and uh, obviously deciding to work with uh, Mick Jones wasn't a, a move of divine inspiration. Uh, uh, whose call was that? The entire band's? I think it was Mick's idea. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How'd you get to know him? Uh, just, he just turned up one day, and we thought it was just, you know, someone trying to get out the cold to turn up in our house room <laughs> with, a, with a can of beer and a dog. <laughs> and not a dog, it was a rabbit. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, know, you, had, you had a can of beer. Um, <laughs> You know, he's got a little dance he does. So you, you know if it's going well if he's doing his little dance. And if he's if they're getting dancing, then he's like, well, everyone's got a flash pattern on a part like what I got. <laughs> well, I just think you're doing that. Well, oh, well boys, that's really great, boys, really great. I'm really happy to be working with you all. <laughs> Years ago, but we lost all the records, records, so I sold them all. But I've been getting um, there's a love album called For Sale. You know what I mean? 
Only you can bring back the good old days. So let's hear it again for our long lost friend. He passed away, maybe it's better that way. And even if I'm thinking upside down, you're right side up with me, my friend. You know that you're the one for me. Only you still can see a memory. What about the time when you took my arm? You said, come with me, you don't have to be strong. Here's a little something to relax your mind. Now that we are to overcome.